It happened. It finally happened. I brought a Leopon baby two days ago. Let's chat about the method I took to arrive at this point and my suggestions for you to get here too. <laughs> The journey to this cub birth was about four casual months long. Now, this was a little daunting of a task, so I took my time. Someone who plays light and daily for multiple hour sessions could knock this out in a lot less time. At first, I thought I might be able to accomplish this using brute force tactics. I put all my 1-10% to fertility lionesses together and kept breeding them. I definitely do not recommend this strategy. Theoretically, a leopon has a chance of occurring this way. From my trials with this method, that chance is very low. I did not breed a single mutated cub from any of my lionesses over the last four months. My second method was using cottonroot bark. Cottonroot bark is a consumable item a user feeds to a lioness when she's pregnant. The cottonroot bark will cause a miscarriage. The lioness will enter heat again after a three-day cooldown. When she gets pregnant during that time period, there's an increased chance of a mutant offspring. Cottonroot bark is a little expensive. It's available in the Oasis for one gold beetle, the premium currency. That's about 50 cents in United States dollars. Or you can buy cottonroot bark from other players in their branches. You do not have to spend any real world money to get cottonroot bark. If you plan ahead, buy strategic event items, and sell things, you can save for this pretty quickly. I ran two cottonroot bark trials. Both included 1% fertility mothers and resulted in cubs without mutations. Two is hardly a sound sample size, so I can't conclude anything from these trials except that they failed. If I had unlimited resources, the ideal situation would be running about a dozen trials. But I did have limited resources, so I stopped after two trials. My third method was using a GMO cow. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism. A GMO cow is an event item available in the month of September. A user does not need to spend real-world money to get this item. Someone who saves, plans ahead, or strategically accumulates in-game currency can purchase a GMO cow without spending real-world money. However, someone who chooses to purchase the paid currency can spend about 30 real-world dollars and buy a GMO cow off user and branches. The GMO cow is less tricky than the cottonroot bark. A user feeds the cow to a lioness, then breeds that lioness for a heightened chance of the offspring having a mutation. I only ran one trial with a GMO cow and it was a success. Our little lady Leoponess is the direct result of a GMO cow. I've verified that a GMO cow is a viable method for breeding a Leopon. However, I did not make any attempts with lion meat. Now that I have a Leopon, I think that's the end of this quest for now. The goal was to breed a Leopon, not multiple. Since I now have one, I'll be able to breed her and hopefully her offspring will include more Leopons. She's definitely going to be the grand impress of my den. That being said, I want your input on naming her. I want to give her a regal name, so here are the names I'm considering. Hetepshit, Ashera, Arsino. Please let me know in the card poll that should be popping up in the upper right hand corner of this video what you think I should call her. Since the GMO cow was the lucky item that I attribute to the little Leopon's mutation, I decided that the best possible raffle our clan could host over the next seven days should be a GMO cow. I recommend use of the cow with a low fertility lioness, considering that's what I did. Tickets are a complete steal at 250 silver beetles. Even I'm buying tickets for this raffle because that is, like I said, a complete steal. The arrival of the little Leopon is far from being the only exciting thing that's happened on Leiden since our last video. My last video was about Leiden game interface design. This is the second major feedback video I've made about a game. Before this was my feedback on another game. The owner of that game put my design to work in almost exactly the way I had designed. The owner acknowledged in private messages to me that this advancement was a direct result of my suggestion. However, then the development of that feature completely ceased instead of continuing after the community tested the feature. Also, I wasn't publicly credited with the design of this feature. While this was incredibly flattering, it makes me apprehensive to suggest changes for other games. That's why my Leiden suggested video didn't include that many detailed mock-ups. I didn't want to offer easy solutions. If the team I'm providing unsolicited feedback to enjoys the content and suggestion, I want them to work through the solution themselves. That way I'm not doing extra free work and they get to fully own what they produce. 
Plus, they understand their long-term goals and know how the ecosystem of their code functions. Leiden's team put one of my suggestions to work. I can't take full responsibility for this because I have no verification that that's what happened and it doesn't copy any mockups I made. And that's exactly how I would want this kind of feedback to work. This could so easily sound like I'm trying to take credit for something I had no stake in, and sure, take it that way if you want. But here are the facts. On November 3rd, I released my video stating that I'd really enjoy it if I could pick a lioness's art to be a cave's thumbnail picture. On December 2nd, Leiden released a news post and feature stating, Your cave can now showcase a featured lion on its page. It will take the base image of the lion, without decor, and place it on the cave background that is on display in your caves. This could be an elaborate coincidence, but I don't think it is. As soon as I saw this update, I totally freaked out. I love the execution, and I think that the developers did a great job contextualizing this feature for the game ecosystem. The way they did this makes a lot of sense. For future suggestions, I may go about it the old-fashioned way and post on the forums. Anyways, I'm excited to see the optimizations and improvements the team makes during or after the overall general site recode. It's easy for users to overlook how much coding and recoding a team needs to do in order to ensure efficiency. Legacy code can be annoying to work with and time-consuming to replace. The next time we talk about Leiden, it will probably be about my next stat replacer, Hooky Bedell, Rosette Marking Breeding, or a Breeding Challenge. Let me know in the comments what you want to hear about if you have a strong preference. Definitely do not forget to enter the raffle while you can. Subscribe to this channel if you love Leiden and want to hear more about it. Support me on Patreon if you believe in me. Leave a thumbs up if you found this entertaining or helpful. Thanks! Oh.